Hello everyone. Few days back on my Discord server, someone shared a very interesting SQL problem and I felt this is something that I should definitely share with each and every one of you because every SQL enthusiast is really going to enjoy solving this problem. Now the problem statement is pretty simple. As you can see, we have been given this input table which has basically some list of arbitrary values. We need to write a query which is going to come up with an output as shown here. So the very first value in the given input should basically be moved into the first record. The next two values should be moved to the second record. The next three values should be printed in the third record and so on and so forth. Right now, this is a problem that you generally get to solve if you are using some programming languages like Python or Java, etc. And we generally solve it using for loop, right, or any other type of loop statement. But in SQL, how do you solve this kind of a problem? Okay, and that's what we are going to find out in this video. Okay, I'll be using the PostgreSQL database. I'm going to be using the PG admin tool. I have already created the input table, I'm naming it arbitrary values. It has one single column, one single record with all the given input values. Okay. Now, how do I solve this problem? So the first thing is, let us try to understand what is our most basic need in this problem. That is, we have a list of comma separated values, but in our output, some of the values are in one row, some of them are in the second row and so on and so forth. That means I probably need to transpose this row level data into basically column level data value in one column into multiple rows. Right. That means I can easily do that in PostgreSQL by using a couple of functions. The first thing is I need to convert this text or a string value into an array. And you can see that this value is basically character varying. That means varchar. So I need to convert this varchar into a, basically an array. I can do that by using the string to array function. So I'll say string to array. I'll pass in the column name. And if I run it, I'm getting an error because there is a second argument in this function and that is the separator and it's going to be a comma. And if I pass it, now you can see that my varchar is now converted into an array. Okay, so I have all of these elements within an array, right? Now, once I have an array, I can easily basically move each of the element within an array into separate rows by using the unnest function. So I just tell unnest and I'll do this and if I run it, now we can see that each of the values within that array or each element within the array is now split into separate rows. Okay, so this is basically my very first task. That is, I have each value separated out in each row. Once I have this, in order to build my logic, there is one very important thing that I need. And that is, I have these values here. I can see there are 21 values, but I also need a unique identifier for each of these values. Because if you look at this problem statement, you see that in if you're using any other programming languages, when you have to solve, when you have to get an output that looks something like this. In the first row, you have one value, the second row, two values, and so on and so forth. This is something that you solve using some for, for loop, right? In, in let's say in Python, you generally solve it using a for loop or a while loop, right? And how you do this is in the first iteration, you take the first value, in the second iteration, you take uh, two values in the third iteration, you take three values and so on and so forth, right? That means you need some identifier, right? Some something like you can get a, like a unique identifier, a row number or something like that. So you could use that to basically identify how many values you need to take in each iteration, right? And that is why in this value that I'm getting here, I need to find a unique identifier or a row number for each of these values. Now, there are two ways I can basically add a unique identifier to each of these rows. Number one is by using the row number window function, which is pretty simple. I'm sure everyone knows it. There's another way of doing it. And that is by using something called as a with ordinality, which is kind of like a keyword that Postgres allows you to use with any function. You can suffix a function with basically that keyword with ordinality. Now what this does is if you use a function as a table function, that means now this is a function you can see here, it's returning me some output, right? Now I can also use this function, let's say as in inside my from clause. So I can just tell, let's say cross join. Okay. And I can put that same function here and let's say I'm just going to call it like X. And here I can just tell x dot star and I'm still going to get the same output. Okay. So you can see that I'm still getting the 21 rows and I'm still getting the same values. Okay. So I'm using this function here in the from clause. So you can treat it like a table function. Okay. Now the thing is when you have a table function, 
if you use a keyword something like let's say uh, with ordinality that's it just this keyword with ordinality what this does is along with returning the value from the function it will also return a value for each of the returned record and the value will start from one okay so that means if i just execute this query now the same column is still returned but additionally i have this ordinality column return and that you can see that it's basically something like a row number so it starts with one and it's unique number for each record so it starts from one and goes until 21 okay now i can also give a name for these columns here i can just tell let's say my first column is val and my second column is let's say index idx and if i just run it now you can see that i have these 21 values from my input table and i have this index for each of those values right now this is basically my very first step okay so i wanted to transform my input table into something like this so that i'm going to use this column to build my logic later on now let's come to basically the main logic now i have already told you when you're using python or some other programming languages this is a kind of a problem that you solve using the loop statement now in sql can you imagine implementing similar to a loop statement now if you imagine you basically would know that you could do something similar to a loop statement by using recursion right and that's exactly what i'm going to use to solve this problem so what i want to do is i want to iterate through different records of this table so in the first iteration i only want to return the one value that is the first record in the second iteration i want to process two records so these two records and in the third iteration i want to process the next three records and so on and so forth in each iteration based on which iteration i am doing i want to take so many values okay that's the logic that i'm going to build now in order to use recursion i'll just use the syntax here so i'm just going to say with recursive cte as and here i'll just i need to write my query right the recursive query but before that i'll just move this query inside another ct here okay and i'm just going to call it like let's say cte values okay and as and that's it and here i'll just put this inside a parenthesis and i'll just write my main query select star from ct okay now this is basically kind of like my overall query how it would look like i have just transformed my input table so that i can get an index value as well for each of the values and then here i need to write the recursive part of the query right now in the recursive part of the query we all know that there will be two queries the first is going to be the base query and then there's going to be an union clause and then there's going to be the recursive part of the query right now the base query is going to be pretty simple because in my first iteration i know that i just need to fetch the first row right so i'm just going to say select star from instead of taking from arbitrary values i want all of this to be treated my input table so i'll say select star from the ct values table right and here i'm just going to say where idx equal to one okay so i think that should basically be my base query so if i execute it you can see that in the first iteration i'm getting that first value okay that is this one so i have already got a, a small part of my output here already right now when it comes to the second iteration we all know in recursion in the first iteration only the base query gets executed but after the first iteration when it comes to the next iterations the recursive part of the query gets executed and that is what i need to provide here now before i can write the recursive part of the query i just want to add one more thing in the base query here so i will fetch all the columns that is the value and the index from my input table that i have derived here but additionally i also want to know the iteration number in each which iteration basically i am right because when i am in the first iteration i want to take one record one value when i'm in the second iteration i want to take two values when i'm in the third iteration i want to take th three values that's what we are trying to build right so i want to know the iteration number and that is what i'm going to do here i'm just going to say one as iter okay you can we'll just call it like iter basically means iteration right so this is one field that we will be using now let's write the recursive part of the query now in order to write the recursive part of the query i'm just going to say select star from cte i need to join it ct is basically what i get from the pre previous iteration i need to join it with my main table the table which has all the data and that is this one that is cte values i'll just call it like cv then i need to write my join condition which we will write in a short while but before that let's look at the select clause in the select clause 
I need star, but star is basically going to be all the fields from the CV table, that is this table, right? Because CT is just basically all the records from the previous iteration. I want to take the new records basically from my main table, right? My, my input table. That is why CV dot star. Okay. The next thing is the iter column. So in the we know that in the base query gets executed in the first iteration. So it will always have the iteration as one. But next iteration, the next iteration, this query gets executed. So I want the iterator to be iter plus one. So this whole thing is going to be my new iterator or iteration number, right? So that's what it will be. When it goes to the third iteration, it will basically return this value and it will again do plus one. So the iteration will keep on increasing based on each iteration. Okay. I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain here. Okay. So this is my iteration column. Okay. Now let's come up with a logic to basically join these two tables that is in my uh, recursive query and also have something that's going to terminate it at some stage, right? We need to have a join condition and a termination condition in your recursive part of the query. That is how recursion works, right? Now, before I explain that, let's look at the input data once more. Now, in the first iteration, we know that this record gets returned, right? In the second iteration, I want these two records to get returned. Now, the logic that we want to build is, in the first iteration, we want to take one record. In the second iteration, we want to take two records starting from the record after the previous iteration, the record that was processed in the previous iteration, we should ignore that and we should start from the next record, right? So that will be in the second iteration, it will be record two and three. When I come to the third iteration, it should be record four, five and six, right? So how many records I need to fetch, I will get it from this iter field because it will tell me in which iteration I am and I need to take so many records, right? But from where should I fetch those records, the starting point, that one, it basically will be the last or the maximum index. The So basically the total number of records processed in each iteration, if I take the maximum of that index, so in the second iteration, it will be three. If I take that value, if I do plus one, I can start from there, right? So that's the logic that I'm trying to build. So in order to do that, in each iteration, I also want to know what is the maximum index value that was processed. So here I have taken two fields, but I also am going to add a third field here. I'm adding it first in the base query, right? So here I'm just going to say it's going to be max of IDX. Okay. And if I use just max, then I will need to use the group by clause, which I can, do not want to use. So I'll just use it like a window function. So I'm just going to say over. Okay, and I don't need to provide any order by partition by anything, right? Just this will work. And here I'm just going to call it like max of IDX. Okay, now I will need this in order to basically identify which was the last record processed in the previous iteration. Then if I do plus one, that is the number of record I start with, right? For processing from the next iteration, okay? I hope I'm not confusing this too much, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain, okay? So now here I need to provide my join condition. So I'm just going to say cv.idx, right? Should be between, so, so let's say we are processing the second record now, okay? So this, I, in the second iteration, I only want to process these two records. So the index should be between the, I think it is the max, IDX plus one. So the max in the first iteration would be one. So one plus one is two. So it will start from this and it should go until, so again, I will just copy this whole thing until two records. So the two records, I will get it from the iter. So plus, plus the iteration. Okay. So this max index plus one will be this record. Then when I do iter, iter is basically one. So this will basically be one plus one plus one. So this is going to be three. Okay. So it will start from two. It will go until three. So in the second iteration, these two records will be processed. Now, just to make it more clear, let's imagine that you are now two iterations are done. Now you are moving into the third iteration. When you move into the third iteration, we basically want to process record four, five, and six, right? Now in that case, the index should be between max index plus one. So 
max index from the previous iteration. In the previous iteration, these two records were processed. So the max index would be 3. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So in the third iteration, your record from where the processing will start will be with the index 4 and that is this one, right? And it should go until three records, right? That because the iteration is third one, right? Now this iter is going to be 2, okay? Because in the third iteration, iter will be 2. When you do 2 plus 1, then you get returned as 3, okay? But here it will be max index is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, and so it will go until 6, okay? So this is basically the logic based on which I think the we should get the final output. Now I'm just going to execute this. Maybe let me just move this little down. And if I execute this, I'm getting an error. Let's try to fix it. Okay, the problem is the number of columns in the in this two queries needs to be the same because I'm using an union clause. So I need to find the max index in this uh, recursive part of the query as well. And I'm just going to use the same uh, logic max of index, but this index should be from the CV table. Okay, that is from this table, right? Now, if I run it, now you can see that I'm already getting the output. I'm getting 21 rows. And if you just look at the field iter and value, you will basically see that in the first iteration, one value is fetched. In the second iteration, two values are fetched. In the third iteration, three values are fetched and so on and so forth. Just to make it more clear, I'll just put the two columns that we need to see here. And that is, I'll say iter and val. If I run it, you can see that in the first iteration, one record, then two record, then three record, then four record and so on and so forth. Okay, so I hope this makes some sense. You understood the logic here. Now let us try to come up with the final output. So I need to have one row for each of these values, right? Each of this iteration. So that means I need to do some aggregation. So I will do that by using the group by clause. So I'll say group by iter and I'll say order by iter as well, order by iter. Okay, and here I'm just going to say iter, let me rename it like grp. And I'm in order to do the aggregation, basically, I need to merge values. So different values in different rows, I want to bring them together into a single row. So it's basically the reverse of what we did in the first step. And I can do that by using the string aggregate function. So string aggregate, I'll pass in the separator, it's going to be a comma. And I'll name it like val. Okay, if I run it, now you can see that I am basically getting my final output. So first value in the first record, then two values, then three values, four values, five values, and finally six values. Okay, so this is basically the solution to this particular problem. I'm not sure how much you were able to understand it. If it was a little confusing, try to watch the video again. Try to solve it yourself step by step. Hopefully you will understand this. If you like this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment with your feedback. And if you have any more interesting problems, definitely email me the problem. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.